If you say anything at all, I'll cry. <laughs> well, you've got ten minutes, Joy. That's an eternity in this place. Yes, Annie, I will play checkers with you, and I will beat you. But not until I've had about 64 cups of coffee, because I have a hangover. Getting wet, you diva? Listen, Johnson, I've about had it with you. I want you to get your butt out of that sack and get it in gear because you have work to do. I want you to clean the bathroom floor. Then I want you to clean the toilets inside and out. Then you will scrub the bathtub and all the sinks. Then you will polish all the fixtures, and then you will wash and polish all the mirrors. Then you will wash the floor of the shower, and then the walls of the shower, and then you will wash the shower curtain. And when you are finished with all that, Johnson, you will then cook us all a nice big Mexican dinner. Oh, sorry, you're not Mexican. <laughs> Can I get you something? Yeah. <laughs> Robert Redford. Uh, busy. How about Burt Reynolds? Think he'd go for this? Don't worry, I'll be all right. I'll be functioning soon. Maybe. Everything's quiet. They're eating their hotcakes. So cold because they're cold. Did you see the green-colored fish we had yesterday? Please don't do that to me. You know, I'm on the edge as it is. You drink a lot. There's a lot to drink. We should get out of this dump. We're wasted here. This isn't a hospital, it's a prison. You are crazed, of course. But you're a darn good nurse, not a guard. So what are you? Well, I'm not somebody the administration is scared of. I'm not weird and feisty like you. I'm a 56-year-old nurse. You are? Yes, 56. Oh. <laughs> and who's going to hire a 56-year-old nurse? Except the state. You could retire. To what? Did. You look great for 56. Make wonderful coffee.
I want to see Mom. She's not here. Oh, you're guarding your door like the Chinese communists were coming up the road. All right, you're safe. I won't come in. I just want to see Mom. She's not here. Are you afraid someone's going to see me? Your misfit runaway daughter, who's so disappointed you because she doesn't spend all her days and nights giving your grandchildren, among all the other things that you find wrong with me? That's stupid. Yes, it is. Please, I want to see Mom. I need to see her. I'm thinking about moving on. I'm not certain, but I'm thinking about it. Maybe I want to say goodbye. What have they got this month? Okay. Neurological telemetry unit to work an exciting clinical research unit designed for telemetric monitoring patients with seizure disorders. Wanted phlebotomist supervisor, cardiopulmonary rehabilitation coordinator, alcoholic rehab. Terrific. I can earn as I learn. Open heart RN, pump perfusionist, hemodialysis RN. Here's one. Pediatric opportunities. No, I don't want to work with kids. Can't handle that. Uh, consider urology. Why? A terrific shift differential. That's what it says. Terrific. Where? 10% PM, 15% nights, Pennsylvania. Not terrific, but not bad. Continuous education available in-house, medical dental coverage, substantial reimbursement for unused sick time. Make the choice today, it says. Night nurses are special people. Yeah, they have no friends. Uh, contact Noreen Murphy at... Charleston, just for it! checks out alone, Joy. No. Yes, I guess so. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know what that is. It's easy what that is. It's the end. End, though. Period. The big zip. Yeah. When it's over, Frank. But I'm thinking... when you're dying. That stretch, when we're still alive, 
and we're dying. Those moments, that combination, that must be quite an experience, Frank. I think you ought to be able to share that if you want to. See you, John. Home. Hi, Joy. You quitting early? I'm quitting. You're quitting? I'm quitting, Harry. Where are you going? Out. What are you going to do? I haven't the faintest idea. How's Molly? Well, she's better. Remission. I suppose. Go for it. <laughs> you too. I'm going to try. This is it, Euphema. No more boondocks. The big time. Gotta go in there and take control, take charge. <sighs> Knock them dead. Miss Slick. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Euphema is here. Miss Euphema? Yes, ma'am. Please, come in. Thank you. It's a city hospital, so there are a lot of poor people, a lot of unsophisticated people. There are all the usual fears and anxieties. This place is about oh, 65 years old, and it shows. And because it is a city hospital, the pay, of course, stinks. For an RN like yourself, about $200 a week on the day shift. We have two openings. There's a slot on the day shift in pediatrics, a tough ward. The other one? All right. We need a charge nurse on the night shift in neurology. Our toughest ward. A lot of very sick people. Kidney surgery, nephrectomies. A lot of yellow shoes. <laughs> second effort required. I'm sorry, second effort? <laughs> it's a sports term. Go in and win when you're losing. Second effort. Oh, yes. I invented it. <laughs> Good morning, Dwight. Good morning, Mrs. Murphy. Who is that? Mr. Ferber? Yep. Mr. Ferber? Yes, a patient. Renal failure, not unexpected. Going to the morgue. I didn't see any patient. I didn't see any Mr. Ferber. Oh, the body's inside. Clever, huh? Clever? Hospital policy, so we don't freak people out in the elevator. You mean they're trying to deny the fact that people die in hospitals? Well, here we are. One big four-bedroom on that end. The rest are semi-private, two to a room. Thirty beds in all. As you can see, it wings up at either end. Yes, uh-huh. Meaning that if you're down there working, you can't tell whether there's a light on up here. Right called American know-how. And speaking of that, here comes Miss Lyons, the head nurse. Oh, notice that she has no butt. That's because she's run it off. <laughs> I know, Reed. I'll be with you in a minute. Mr. McBain, out. You were out of bounds. You were trespassing. You were breaking about a dozen hospital rules, and you're sitting in my chair. Oh. Oh, well. Oh, dear. Uh, slippers, Mr. McBain, slippers for all your various journeys. Oh. Louisa, it is 250 cc's and not 500. Repeat, not five. Do you hear me? Joy, this is Martha Jean Lyons. Martha, How do this you is do? Joy Yafima. She's from 
Franklin State Hospital and is considering a move to the big town. We've been discussing the opening for charge nurse, the 3 to 11 shift. Oh, mm-hmm. Where did you go to school? An associate degree. College girl. When do I start? Pressure? No pulse, no pressure, doctor. Let's get one going. Wanna take over for me, please? Got it. Sleep. Go. Hey, ventilation's going good. Hey, Sicily. Give me one milligram atropine. Push it. Atropine on board. Good. Nothing, nothing happening. Let's see if you have 400. Got another bicarb. Come here. Take it. Back. I don't understand. Nothing's happening. My card. Dr. Kellerman, he was fine 10 minutes ago. The aides found him not breathing, no pulse. Zip one milligram atropine. Deep fib once, nothing. Zip. Okay, hit him again. And another bike card. Clear. Take it. Bag it. My card. Push. No rhythm. All right, give me an amp epinephrine. I see me. I'm giving bicarb. Get it yourself, please. It's in the drawer. All right, stop compression. Take it. Nothing. Okay, that's it. Shut it down. He's gone. <clears throat> he had maybe uh, a couple months left anyway. I gotta do charts. I'm way behind. Hey. Beer. What? Warm. Warm beer. You asked me what I'd like. So, I would like some beer. All right. As long as I don't have to drink it. I'll bring you in a six-pack tomorrow, and you'll get drunk and throw up, and I'll get fired. <laughs> What kind of beer do you want? Warm. <laughs> Go to sleep. Uh. Mm. Oh, poor old Harry. He didn't leave much stuff, did he? No. But we did have Harry. He was here. He lived. We did have him. Technology conference will begin in 15 minutes in the main sixth floor conference room. The technology conference. Good night, the Take it easy, Franklin. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Wait a minute, Martha. Schedule says 20 nurses day shift urology tomorrow. Well, if they can be called that from that school of nursing we're affiliated with. No, no, wait a minute. 20 nurses on the day shift, and tomorrow night there's me and the aide. I don't even have Sally. She's off. Take it up with the supervisor. The supervisor? The supervisor rolled through here last night clutching her file folders, and we were up to here in poop and guts and blood, and I said to her, what we have here is unsafe nursing because we're understaffed, and could you just pitch in and help us out for an hour or so with this? And you want to know what she said to me? Quote, what is your name? 
Unquote. I want help here. I want another RN here because we have too much work here at night. Well, maybe you didn't notice, but she rolled through twice last night. Because the first time, the practical complaint, because you were sitting back there with Mr. McBain chatting away, your 9 o'clock medications hadn't been given yet, and it's very simple. You're not delegating well, Euphema. You're just not delegating well. Your priorities are mixed up. Joy, you want to survive. You want to stay on here. Learn your shortcuts. Dr. Kellerman, I... Good night. 2005. Dr. Kellerman, call ICU Shortcut. Staff. All right. Management. Mm-hmm. How you doing? Want to sit? This is a somewhat calculated encounter, Joy. Oh, God, the two-month evaluation? Coming up. I can handle it. I wasn't hungry anyway. You want this? You are a remarkable nurse, Yuvino. You've got the touch. Every one of your patients wants to adopt you, or lease you, or rent you, or in some cases, even marry you. Hmm. And I don't know what to do with you. You are the biggest pain in the neck we've ever had around here. You are spending too much time with the patients. That is, when you are in the hospital. Mrs. Richard Simonowski, room 614. Last Tuesday, you left the ward, left the hospital, got into your car, and went and bought her a pizza. Eleven minutes. You left your station. Sally covered for me. She's dying. She's alone. I asked her what she wanted. She wanted a pizza. The one-armed man, Abel Parent, had a... That was his wife. The room was empty. They're in love. He's 61 years old. Is he? Then there's the question of the Airedale in room four. No. Uh, we Wheaton Terrier. Little, they look like Scotty. But They're dogs like... are not allowed in the hospital. Hospitals are for people. Kennels are for dogs. You are impossible. And you still haven't learned the shortcut. Gee. What is that shortcut? What does that mean? That's when you have a comatose patient and you don't bathe them, you just leave them there, turn out the light because he can't talk. Who's he going to tell? The supervisor, right? You going to fire me? It seems to me we have two options with you. One is to get rid of you, and the other is worse. It's worse. If I had the authority, I would do it. You would. Yep. I'd put you in charge of the entire hospital. <sighs> that won't happen, because you won't last here that long. Doctor, don't you think she'd rather be at home? Kidney failure, and you want to send her home. That's senseless. They can't take care of her at home. She's too ill. Well, is there anything more we can do for her here? No. Well, then why not get good visiting nurses and let her go home? Just what are you proposing, nurse? That you go in there and tell her she's dying? No. That's so ridiculous, so unfeeling. No, I can't believe I'm proposing it. that we give her the choice of what would be best for her. Don't you assume that she knows she's dying? I assume nothing. But I do know you're not going to go in there and tell her she's dying. That's grotesque. You're not listening to me, doctor. The woman is severely ill, but she's still entitled to her opinion. Nurse. Can't we give her her dignity? Can't Nurse. we let her die where she wants to? Nurse, you're on the medication cart. You're not Billy Graham, and you're not Albert Schweitzer. You're a nurse, and by definition, nurses deal with the living, and that woman is alive. Nellie, would you like to go home? It doesn't matter. What do you mean, it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. 
You're very sick, Nellie. Mm. Would you like to talk about it? No. Can I get you anything, Nellie? You're not going to be here in the morning, are you, Nellie? No. Can I stay with you, Nellie? I'm going to stay. Maybe we can share it. Mrs. Norris? You know, I don't think too much of her doctor. It's called denial. Don't talk about it. Don't face up to it. So the dying person is even more isolated. There's a study in the current nursing journal Somebody figured out that it takes a nurse twice as long to answer a call from a dying patient. Doctors don't want to tell you what you've got. Nurses don't want to help you if you've got it. There are people who... People do that. It's wrong. You were with her. I could have been anywhere. I could have been at the other end of the hall. Hey. You want to be here? The hospital charges you $30 a month to park on that lot. Because that way, actually, we lose money. That way we can write it off. It's a tax gimmick. So we can build on it. There's always a gimmick. It's called get the staff. Shoot. It's the usual weekly special. Nothing new. Oh, Miss Murphy. Harley. Um, I was wondering how I find out how many vacation days I got coming. Harley, if you can't remember, go to my office and talk to Joni, my secretary. See, I just lose track, that's all. <laughs> oh. Where'd we get her? Uh, what about the pants? Can we wear pants? Did you get a ruling on that? Nope, not yet. Um, our bathroom is still out in emergency. I'm aware of that. Use the visitors, John. <laughs> Have you seen some of our visitors? I mean, there ought to be a dip tank by the door. <laughs> Those aren't the visitors. <laughs> Those are the patients. <laughs> Your humanity overwhelms me. Oh, you do the midnight run in emergency and you'll be overwhelmed. I have for 18 months, Ms. Franklin. You've got 17 to go. Well, no more complaints. Just the rotten bathrooms, the rotten skirts, the rotten staff food, 
the creep in the laundry room, the lousy equipment in physiotherapy, the eccentricities of Dr. Lattice, and the parking. Is that all? No. Come on, this is all garbage. You guys know that. I think what we ought to be talking about is how we can take better care of the patients, especially those who are critically ill and dying. Yes, we are giving very good medical care, and yes, we are making sure that they are physically comfortable. But we are forgetting that there is a person that we are losing. We are not meeting their emotional needs. And so I was thinking that maybe this is a good time for us to be questioning our own feelings about death so that we can be learning how to stay with the dying patient instead of isolating them. They're scared, and we're scared, so everybody's scared, but we're afraid to uh, go in there and get involved because we all want to save ourselves a little heartache. I think it's very important for us to be together on this. I've been going to some seminars and doing some reading, and, and I'd like to read you one thing that I think is astounding. Okay, yeah. our time's up for today. Let's save this for the next time, and then I can miss it. doing? We are here to prep Mr. Harrison, who looks like he'd rather be in Cincinnati, but he has to be in OR tomorrow, so he's going to get a haircut. I shouldn't be doing this. The orderly should be doing it, but yesterday was payday, so guess who didn't show up? So you're stuck with me, kid. I'm going to be doing it. Doing what? Shaving your belly. Oh, boy. Yes, yes, there is hair on the belly, Mr. Harrison. Did you know that? It's awful, isn't it? See, what's going to happen is Dr. Kellerman's going to be going in there in the morning, so we don't want hair in the way now, do we? So what's going to happen is I'm going to shave it all off, right around here, from the groin to the flank. The groin? Yes. Oh, you do have a groin, don't you? Mr. Harrison, I do. i got to tell you something, Mr. Harrison. Groins are like toothaches. Sooner or later, everybody's got one. So if you will kindly lie down and pull down your pajama pants. Lift up here for me, sir. Uh, thank you. We will have a go at this. So, Mr. Harrison, hear any good racial jokes lately? I got a great one for you. Black guy walks into a synagogue. Oh, come on, I... Says, I'll have a scotch under rocks. The rabbi says, wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you think you're doing here? Black guy says, I know what I'm doing here. What are you doing here? Joy? Yeah. You want to come to room 604? Yeah, Harley, as soon as I'm done. Couple minutes. Make like this. <laughs> the black guy says, let me ask you a question, Rabbi. Do you have something against mixed drinks? So they said the machine or transplant. Well, the machine costs $83,000 a minute or something. Anyway. Here I am, a man dying this afternoon, and here I am. Being depilitated by a honky. <laughs> I can have it. Oh, you can, huh? That's great. Hey, honkies have feelings, too. Did you know that? Oh, yeah? Says who? Joy, are you coming to 604? Right away, Harley. You've got a great belly, Harrison. Don't you care what people say?
I don't know what happened. He started to shake a little, and then he spilled his water. And he started making these funny sounds, so I came to get you. Yes, but you, but you didn't come. say trouble. You said come to room 604. You could have called a code. You could have called Sally. Are you crazy? No, I am not crazy. It's impossible. No, it is not impossible. It is possible, and it is time, Noreen, and you can make it happen. You are crazy. You are out of your skull. There is no such job. There is no such classification. It doesn't exist. Oh. Come in. Then maybe you'll leave. Oh. There is no such thing as a death and dying nurse. That oh, is hogwash. Come on, Noreen. You know there is. They've been doing it in England for years. Well, that's there. This is here and now. There is no precedent for it. There's a need. Whose need? Maybe it is strange for me to be helping people to accept death as a way for me to accept life. I don't know. But I think I'm good at it. You're right. You are strange. I should have fired you. That's what I should have done. What do you want? I want all the dying patients in the hospital. Do you think doctors will refer you? I have no idea. I don't know. Do you think dying patients will even talk to you? Yes, that I know. And I will talk to them. And I will be the only one around here who does. Is it wrong? No. Is it time? Is it me? Dr. Hamilton. Oh. Hello, Dr. Hamilton. Four, oh, eight, oh. Got the answer, it won't. Same. So here he is again. Same old thing, the bag, the same old thing. Oh, I... You can't just come back again. Oh, Got him in chemotherapy. Surgery? Pointless. And the prognosis? A couple of months. Talk to him. Do uh, whatever you do. He, he's an interesting, tough, hard hat guy. Steel worker. Hmm. Second time around for him. Yes. Well, I want to thank you, Dr. Burgess. It's the first referral I've had from a staff doctor. Yes. You can't imagine how difficult it's been trying to get someone like yourself to understand what it is that I'm trying to do. Thank you. Mm. Mr. Kutriba. Good morning. I hope I didn't wake you. Oh. I hope I'm not disturbing you. No. My name is Joy. Well, hello, Joy. <sighs> May I sit? Would it be uncomfortable sure. if I sat on the bed? Oh, plank it. Come on. I'm a special nurse, Mr. Kurtzreba. I work with people who are seriously ill here in the hospital, and Dr. Burgess suggested I come in, that we get acquainted, that perhaps you wanted to talk about your cancer. I don't have cancer. Do oh, I? my God. Are you trying to tell me oh, that I got cancer? I mean, what's going on around here? Who the hell are you anyway? Dr. Burgess. Dr. Burgess. Dr. Burgess did a colostomy on you, Mr. Kutsriba, and you're on chemotherapy now. I can't believe it. Yeah, well, he told me he took out whatever it was inside of me. Oh, God. 
It's the chemotherapy that makes you throw up, Mr. Kutriba. that I'm telling it to you, but it is the truth. But you can die from cancer. Yes, you can. Mr. Kutsriba, what did Dr. Burgess say to you when he did the colostomy last year? He just said it was a, a cyst thing. You see, I, I, uh, I couldn't go to the John and... That SOP, why didn't he tell me? The, the, the chemotherapy people, they didn't tell me. Neither did my wife. That's, that's my wife. That's my... Beautiful new wife. She's very beautiful. I'm sorry, Mr. Kutri. Would you like me to leave? I don't want to. No, no, please. Uh, stay, please. Uh, of course, I will stay. I uh, just got to get this squared away, and I uh, need some answers. I got cancer. Why didn't he tell me? I mean, you see, I got this beautiful for you. <laughs> Did you think that was a good idea, Doctor? What are you talking about? Jim Kutsreba. You didn't tell me that you were avoiding the issue with him. Don't you think that he would have preferred the diagnosis and the prognosis from you? Isn't that what you do? No. What I do is I try and help them once they know the truth. Didn't want to know the truth. Most of them don't want to know the truth. How do you know that? Maybe you don't want to know. Maybe you don't want to deal with it. Miss Shufina, perhaps you don't recognize that some doctors have just as much difficulty in dealing with death as anybody else. Sometimes we perceive it as a failure. And so we choose to avoid it. Do you want uh, 20 minutes on denial from an expert? See, I think if the doctor needs to deny that the patient goes right along with it because they're afraid to upset the doctor. Look, uh, my job is to prolong life. I think, doctor, that your job is also to consider the needs of your patients and to talk with them if they want to. He wants to talk about this. Katrina doesn't want to be alone with this. He has a great many feelings he wants to express. Listen, lady. I appreciate what you're saying. I, I like your concept of it, but frankly, I'm not sure I can handle what he has to express. I can. And maybe I can help him to take control of what's left of the rest of his life. I'd really like to work with you on this, Dr. Burgess. But if you don't want to, I'll continue to work with Mr. Katsriba as long as he wants me to. But you must understand it's not easy to face up to failure. You haven't failed. We're all going to die. The failure is in not talking about it. I don't want to step on any toes, Doctor. I really want to work together. We'll see, Miss Eugenia. We'll see. Right.
Hello. Is this your land? No, I just I keep my horse in the stable over there. It's beautiful. Wish I could buy it. Yeah, me too. I can't afford it. Me either. How much is it, do you know? $6,000 an acre. Ah, life is cruel. Well, you can always rent a stable for 50 bucks a month and all the hay you can eat. <laughs> Do you want some tea? I have some extra. Yeah. Maybe I'm pushing it. But I'm a good nurse, Donna, and I'm doing good work. That's not an answer. That's a job description. I asked you why you do it. I mean, what is this thing you have with death? I don't know. Maybe it has to do with living. You're the psychologist. You tell me. Let me ask you a question. Why is it that everybody's afraid of death and I'm not? That's not an answer either. That's a question. I don't know. Maybe I'm drawn to it because there's something in me. Instant love? What? Well, I can't figure out if what you do is risky or safe. You give love to someone, they give it back. But they're not going to be around to give it back for very long. It's not a real big commitment. Are you saying that I do this work to avoid making long-term relationships with people? I don't know. I'm saying it could work that way. All I know is what I've learned from my patients is that while you're alive, you're alive. All we have is now. That's not bad. On page 17 of the News Journal. A great newspaper if you're a fish. It's hospital PR, that's all. Last month they were pushing the cobalt machine. This month it's me. It'll stop. The dying knows she's there. That's what it said. How'd you get to see it, Mary? My daughter, Janice. She's a pip, isn't she? What do you want, a smart teenager? I was just lying here thinking about my funeral. Your funeral, Mary. Well, one of my closest friends, Julia Willett, is the church organist. She taught my children to play the piano. All of them. Oh. But I couldn't ask her to play at my funeral. But maybe that's all she can give you, Mary. I couldn't. I can. She's one of the dearest people in the whole world. But maybe that's what she'd give you. A lovely tribute to you. Oh, I don't know, Joey. I think it's just too much to ask of one of your friends. Could you ask her and see? Yes. Good. Because what if you didn't? And then she'd have to say, that stinker Mary Coggins never asked me to play at her funeral. I know, if it were for her, 
I couldn't do it for her. Oh, I'm sure you could. I can't play. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> How long is this going to last? Takes about an hour, you know that. Oh, no, Charlie. I mean, how long have I got? About two months. Like we said. If you stop the blood, how long would I live? A couple of weeks. Stop the blood. Wait a minute, Miss Mary. Let's talk about this. Our thought was keep you cooking for a while on the blood, get you home. We've talked about this. What are you doing, Mary? Hiding? Janice has to go to college in September. This is going to get in the way. I got to be done by August so she can get everything ready for school. Well, then, if you come off the blood, it'll be about two weeks. I can't live forever on somebody else's blood. Right. And blood's very expensive, too, isn't it? Oh, now. What are you doing? What are you doing? It's only July, Mary. We got a couple of months yet. You're going home, blood and all. Bud wants you home. I'll talk to Janice. I want you home. I got a vacation coming. Give me a break, will you? Oh, you're tough. Yes, I am. And you're going home. We don't want her home. We can't take care of her. Dad can't handle it. You've seen him. He's a zombie. And I can't handle it. I'm sorry. It's too hard. It's not fair. Well, Janice, I can take some time. I've got some time coming. I can spend the rest of her life with her at your house. No. OK. If you don't want me, we can get visiting nurses, real good ones. No. She's going to stay in the hospital. I have my trip to Washington, and... And why is it so important to you, anyway? You keep trying to get her home to die. What is that with you? You're the only one who talks about her death. Is there something wrong with you? Are you trying to work through something of your own using my mother? I'd like to say that I'm real glad that we became friends and that we have these weekly suppers together here. And in that spirit, if you'd like to get under the table where no one can see you, I'd be happy to hand you things. I'm sorry. Bad day? <sighs> troubling. A troubling day. I have this patient, Mary Coggins, a really lovely woman, you know. And I'm not handling her well. I'm not handling myself well. Something's not working. So? You know, I don't go into those rooms and say, you better get this off your chest, and I'm going to stand here until you do, and aren't I a wonderful person? I say, would you like to share your feelings about what you're going through? And they talk. They talk. I say, would it be painful for you if I sat on the bed? And they got tubes and tumors, and they move over. They invariably move over. Some of them haven't been touched in three months. So? So, Mary Coggins, I want to get her home. I want to get her home to die, and her daughter. Wait a minute. What does she want? I thought you wanted them to take control of their lives. 
Are you in control of Mary Coggins now? Have you changed your mind? What does she want? Does she want to go home? I never asked her. Ah. Hello, John. Hello, Mary. Cleaning up a little spill down here. Blood? Yes. Is that because I stopped taking blood? Partly, yes. That's funny. You know, bottled blood isn't that expensive if you're saving bucks. Is that why you came off it? They didn't want me home. Mary, this is about what you want. What do you want? I want to go home. Then we'll get you home. Mindy? Yeah. It's my day off. Gee. I got a patient I'm real concerned about, so I came in. I got your message. You wanted to see me? I need you. Will you help? Of course. Okay. Come on over here. This one is a little loo. That's the husband. No, don't look. Don't look. He came to take her home, but she won't talk to him. She's in there in the ward, packed, ready to go, discharged, and she won't leave. She won't talk to anybody, and she won't leave. Is she sick? No, she sailed through the delivery, but the baby didn't. She lived three days, yesterday. We need that bed in FEMA. Her name's Sarah. Good morning, ladies. My name is Joy, and I'm on the staff here at the hospital. I'm a nurse. I usually am in uniform, but today, I'm not. I work here. I know what it's like. Hospitals are geared for the living, not the dying, not the dead, Sarah. Dead kind of gets pushed aside, which is understandable, I guess. Death is a very real part of life, as you know, Sarah. And so, The dead are kept downstairs in the morgue. That's where your baby is, Sarah, with others who've died. She's there now. You want to go see her?
Where are you going? For a walk. We'll be back. maternity today. Her infant daughter is here, was brought in yesterday. Baby Oaks, and we'd like to see her. Diaz. Yeah? Mrs. Oaks is not leaving the hospital until she sees her child. You have to not go home empty-handed. Thank 
Joy, you ought to take care of the living, not the dying. Are they two different things? Hi, Joy, where are you going? Pediatrics. Forty beds, currently 32 are occupied. How many are dying, Blanca? Seven. Seven. Eight with Micah readmission. He'll be a pretty soon. We have leukemia, heart defects. We have a three-year-old boy back here with a spinal tumor. Pain is taking him, I think. Usual stuff, Joy. I was wondering when you'd turn up here. <laughs> Here's Mike. Pediatrics, Miss Aurelia. Just a moment, please. It's for you. Oh, Be back. Thanks. Okay. Hello. Mr. Kima? Yes. My name is Allison Cross, and I'm a producer on the program Sunday night. Mr. Kima? I'm, I'm sorry. Hello. Who? I'm sorry. Well, we saw the magazine article and some of the newspaper articles on you, and we'd very much like to come out and talk with you at your convenience. About what? We think we'd like to do a piece on you. And your work there at the hospital. You want to... Sunday night wants to do a piece on me? <laughs> yes, indeed. We're very interested. Who, who is this? Is this Murphy? Murphy, the secret word is... Hello? I've been trying to find you. Someone from the program Sunday night called me. They're trying to reach you. <laughs> you find it amusing? I find it intrusive. This is a hospital, not a booking agency. Okay? Mr. Kramer? The uh, bathroom? Yes, right here? Good. These are some flowers that I got her. They're beautiful, bud. So, we'll, uh, we'll put Mary here, and I'll sleep on the couch downstairs. Is that what you want to do, bud? But. Do you want to sleep downstairs? Oh, sure, I don't mind. I mean, she's sick. She'd want privacy. See, I don't want to disturb her. You wouldn't disturb her, bud. She might not even know you're there. She might wake in the night, and there you'd be. Is that what she wants? Oh, yes. Boy. What it is, bud, is the last few days of Mary's life, her last few memories. Oh, yeah. Mine, too. Of course. She's a very strong woman, Bud. I know that. And I believe, I've seen it now a lot, I believe that people die the way they live. The whiners go out whining and the strong go out strong. Well, if she wants to be here, then we'll be here together. Hello, Dr. Whedon. Hello, Mary. What are you doing? Getting the patient ready for discharge, doctor. She isn't leaving here. She's near death. She knows that, doctor. She wants to go home. She is my patient, and she isn't leaving here. The trip home could kill her. What's the matter with you? She stays. You're the one who's going to go. Let's roll you, Fema. You got to get I think I'm going to cut him out of the will. Listen, you better leave some of that money to me. I may need it. Don't you worry, Joy. I got a vacuum cleaner with your name on it. Oh. Hustle. Let's go. Move before they shut us down. OK, guys. That's good. That's good. Right, keep her level. Keep the lady level, please. We don't want you staying in the cement, do we, Mary? All right, good. Come, 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 go. Good. Alison Cross from UBS. 
Oh, hi, how you doing? Cook Coggins, hold on. You're Shad Fleming. I recognize you. Hello. Hello. Listen, make yourself at home. I'll be back in an hour. Oh, uh, what are you doing? Um, hoisting a patient, uh, liberating her. Um, come for dinner. Later. Bye. What is she doing? That lady wanted to go home to die. They didn't want her to. She wanted to. The joy's helping her. It's called kidnapping. Right. Can I have your autograph, Mr. Fleming? Doesn't your reputation precede you? Don't they know who you are? I mean, uh, here comes Miss Doom. No. The staff knows who I am, but all the patients don't, no. Well, Joy, if you go on Sunday night, I mean, uh, your success lies partly in your anonymity, doesn't it? Does it? No. And yes. Yeah. Just your turning up in a room is a statement, right? Well, I think the nature of what you do is too valuable to suppress. Millions of people watch our program. And I mean millions. They might learn something. It could help. That's true. I agree with that. How do you feel? Will it help or hurt? Help. It will help. It could put you away. No. I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> It's your decision. Do you want to do it? Yes. Yes, indeed. I want to do it. I want to do it. What are they going to do, fire me? Oh. Not eating anything. He's packed it in. I guess he's given up. Well, maybe he's scared. Has anybody talked to him? I don't know. Right. Hi, Mike. Guess what? You're gonna buy me lunch. Although, I would rather have a pizza. If you could, uh, go out and get us one later. They won't let me out of here. Okay. I can go get us one. You like pizza? But no anchovies, okay? Who wants fish on pizza? Are you a horse? You like horses? You ever ridden one? You're lying. You are lying. You're a gigantic liar. I'm going to buy a horse. Good. I got a friend with a horse. You want to come out and ride it sometime? Maybe come out and meet me at the stable? Maybe Sunday? That's a couple of days off. You think you can make it? What are you doing? Show and tell? You're up before the medical board tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. The Coggin discharge. Good luck. I don't believe her. What was that all about? She 
she's uh, management. And a friend, too, I thought. She's been very supportive to me in the past. She's cooling off a little bit lately. Just a tad jealous? Mike, this is Mr. Fleming. Shad, this is Mike. Hi, Mike. We're all set, Chad. Okay, shall we? See you later, Mike. I'm gonna go be on television. I'll see ya. Get that. Bye. Is there a right way and a wrong way to tell someone they're dying? I guess I don't believe in telling a human being they're dying. I think if we listen well, they tell us. What if they just don't want to talk about it? Aren't you taking away or denying them, rather, the right to their silence? Well, I don't rush in cold and say, you're dying. I say, you're ill. What are you going through with that? What are your feelings about it? Do you want to talk about it? I believe people are grateful for someone to finally listen, to finally ask the right questions, to explore their value as a human being, and to know that their passing means something to me. There is nothing wrong with the fact that human beings have to die. There is something wrong with the way we handle it, I believe. Cut. Good, thank you. Let's uh, move to the next setup, please. Yupima, 10 a.m., boardroom. Cancer's been going on since biblical times. So something is wrong. That's right. Mastectomies are described in the Bible. Hippocrates described them. So what have we got today? Denomycin costs $3 to manufacture, and we're selling it for $44.50. We've got the new cobalt machine coming in at $1.2 million. And here I am in serious trouble for saying, let the lady die at home in her husband's arms. Don't isolate her because she's dying. That's worse than medieval. What we have, gentlemen, with cancer and leukemia, mostly, is dying. And you can keep the chemotherapy pumping into the blood to affect the DNA makeup of the carcinoma, maybe, or shrink the tumor, maybe, but all we're doing is avoiding, we are not solving, because until we start thinking about the people and not just the machines, until we start thinking about the people, then I am gonna go to the wire. To see to it that that woman dies where she wants to. I may be in jeopardy, gentlemen, but you all are in deep, deep trouble. Good morning. And UBS is taping her? I finished today. Can't fire her today. That's right. Not today. All right. How popular are you with the doctors? <laughs> well, I've had some successes. There was a lot of antagonism at the beginning about the possibility of a nurse coming in between the patient and the doctor. But I want to work mutually. We've had some altercations in the past, and I believe forever we'll have altercations. Of what kind? Well, it's usually about my presence in the room. Because obviously now the patient puts two and two together. I'm stimulating his thoughts, and I'm opening up a can of worms. And so the doctor might say, I don't want you working with this patient. Well, uh, yes, I understand that, doctor, but what about this person's life? Well, he's not going to live six months. Yes, I know that. Uh, shouldn't we be fair with him and discuss that? There are some physicians with whom I absolutely cannot communicate. Hang up on the phone to me. Blatant orders, death squad, not to see this patient. And so I back off, because at that point, the patient's in the middle, and I'm not interested in a custody fight at the patient's expense. Well, one of the things you're doing, I guess, is getting death out of the closet. But isn't there a good case for keeping it in the closet? Only to the extent that, by not thinking about dying, we feel that much more immortal. 
No. If I don't think about my potential death, which is coming up whenever, then perhaps I don't put into life any perspectives or a good value system for myself. Perhaps it's the delusion that I've got, you know, 80 years to get my stuff together and do things my way. So it's, it's my plea to all of us before it's too late to live life our way. That was Joy Euphema, unlike any other nurse you've ever met. Medical people are beginning to recognize the needs of the terminally ill. Special institutions called hospices have been set up to care for the dying. And more and more hospitals have people on staff, like Joy Euphema, who each day faces her own mortality, each day faces the cold reality of death. Indeed, what she offers her patients is a warm dose of reality. This is Shad Fleming. Good night. Oh, how many millions of Americans watching? I can't move! It was good, wasn't it? It was good, wasn't it? That's not for me. I'm not going to answer it. The hell you're not <laughs> answering! Hello, Stars residents. Okay. Bone marrow is this soft stuff inside the bones. And what your disease has done. The blood is bad. Yeah. That's about it. Can they fix it? They're working on it. Fix rate's not too good. It's a kind of cancer, isn't it? Yes. You know about cancer, do you? I don't know about nothing. Yes, you do. You know about horses. You know that horse that you're going to come out and meet? Well, we got a problem with him. Yeah, what? He won't eat. At least not very much. Maybe he's sick. I suppose. Maybe he's scared. You mean scared because he's sick? Yeah. Maybe. You're sick and you don't eat. I eat. Not very much. I eat some. You know, when you're sick and you know what the reason is for your sickness, like your blood, it's okay to be scared. I can't tell that to a horse, though. Could you buy us pizza? Yes. You never stop, do you? Oh, I saw his chart, Doctor, and I thought... You know, uh, maybe it's time you got your comeuppance. I thought, why aren't we being straight with the patient? Straight? Okay, nurse. Uh, showbiz, follow me. Dr. Hamilton, call urology. Oh, oh, one. Well, Donald, we did the transurethral resection we talked about. The tumor moved up into the urethra and in back of the bladder. What I've done is set up for you to have some uh, x-ray treatments. We'll start these tomorrow morning and we will shrink that tumor. And that's the plan. It's a very simple one. I'll look in on you tomorrow and see how it's going. There's nothing to worry about. We'll bring it down and you'll be able to pass your water again. Cut down on the discomfort. Okay? Okay. I'll leave you with Nurse Euphema, who deals with some of our special projects here. Hang in there, Donald. Yeah. hell was all that? What did he say? Transurethra, bladder, x-ray? What in the hell did he say? What was that? Now, oh, Mr. Duffy, you have this tumor which has been blocking you off, which is why you've been on the catheter. 
And what he said is, they're going to go in there, give you a treatment to shrink the tumor. Cobalt. Yes, Mr. Duffy. Cobalt? Cobalt. Oh, yeah, I know what cobalt is for. That's for cancer, isn't it? Why the hell didn't he say so? Is that what I have? Is that it? Is that what it is? Yes. How do you feel about that, Mr. Duffy? No! No! Are you Irish? Yes, I am. Here's a couple of more for you. It's okay. Come on. Cancer, cancer! Yeah. Now, how do we help you deal with this, Mr. Duffy? Maybe you got 30 years left to throw things and make a fuss. Maybe not. Maybe just a couple of years. Maybe a couple of good years. What matters is what you do with the rest of your life. Who the hell is talking about life? Cobalt's a last-ditch effort, isn't it? Why bother? You're not dead yet, Mr. Duffy. You're very much alive. The clock is ticking, yes. But it's not the quantity of life that counts. It's the quality of life. What do you want to do with it? Do you fish? What? Do you fish? No! Do you hunt? <laughs> no, I throw things. All right, what do you like to do? Birds. What? I like birds. Birds? Yeah, what, birds. to shoot them or to... Ah, uh, I watch birds. Birds? You yeah. watch birds? Yes, I oh, watch nice. birds. See, I like to fish, Mr. Duffy. But when I'm dying, I'm gonna be damn glad that I went fishing instead of ironing my uniforms. You wanna watch the condors riding the... Right. What do you call Thermals. that? The thermals. thermals. That's good, Mr. Duffy. Then do it. Fill your life with what is important to you. Do you want me to come back here tomorrow? Yes. Room 611. Patient's name is Bradley. Are you giving me a referral? What do you want, blood? No, I just want to work. Then work. There's a lot of work to do. Thank you. Thank you. for the star. Call her and tell her to get these out of here. I have tried. She's not around. What do you mean? Didn't she clock in? Yes. Then call Miss Lyons. I have called everybody, paged her, everything. And she clocked in? Yes. Oh. It's over. Now it's in the hands of the board. Heads up. This horse's name is Brandy. What do you think? Could I ride him? Please. Okay. Let's go. He's ready for you. Okay. Okay. Now I want you to hold on. I want you to hold on real tight, because the saddle's too big, okay? Okay, here we go. Okay. Yeah, how you doing? Hi. All right. Let's go. 
go. Come on, come on. All right. Okay, it's been 20 minutes, and you haven't said anything. What'd you do today, quit? No, they beat me to it. Murphy? No, not just Murphy. I think it was a group decision. <sighs> the price of fame. Yeah, it's lonely at the top. I'm so lonely at the bottom. Are you feeling a little sorry for yourself? Yes. What are you going to do? Eat supper. What are you going to do tomorrow? I don't know. Leave me alone. Maybe a hospice. Whose hospice? Mine. Yours? Yes. I've been thinking about it. I can tap into the visiting nurses, the freelance RNs. I can train them, send them out to people's homes, even to the hospitals. It's like what I've been doing, only more hospice. Well, it's about time you did what you're always telling your patients to do. What? Take control of your life. I'm working on it. You're getting there. Is that a compliment? Are you being nice? Repeat after me. I can handle it. I can handle it. I learned so much about dying that I think I'm finally learning about living. I think. Good. A little slow, but good. Thanks a lot! <sighs> good place for a picnic. Good place. Period.